Hey everyone, so I'm back. I, um, I went ahead and did this other ear and I finished up the dark around the eyes and the nose. Finished up the the paws and the little bit of pink around the nose as well. Um, so what I want to do next is actually the flowers because um, after that we're going to come in and do a base layer of white. Uh, so it's easier to just do the flowers first um, and then you can kind of squeeze white in around because um, I kind of freestyle my flowers. I don't always know what they're going to look like until they're done. Um, but I guess if you're following a pattern, that wouldn't be the case. So if you want, you can save the flowers for last. Um, it's up to you, whenever you feel like. Uh, and have fun. Use whatever colors you want. Um, and you can even change what you have there. Like, um, I've done one where it's a succulent bouquet. I've done one where it's some ferns and a mushroom. So you can put, you know, you can have it be a giant heart. You can do a giant heart. Oops. Oh, man. I wasn't going to hit that again. <laughs> uh, you can do a giant heart in, like, initials if you want to do something like that. Um, that would be super cute. Or someone's name. So the possibilities are endless. Whatever you want to put in this little, little spot. You could do, like, a giant letter. Whatever. I should have cut that, huh? Um, so, I'm assuming you're here to watch me stitch a hedgehog, not flowers. Um, so, I'm obviously not going to show you this whole process. But just in case you're not familiar with the woven wheel, that's what I'm doing here. So, you're going to make a spoke with five sides, or spines, or I guess spokes is what those are. Come up near the center, and then you just weave under and over. So that's why you need an odd number of spokes. Um, and it's kind of awkward to do on camera, but uh, it definitely helps to have mobility. Um, this is a hard one to do if you're using like a, a clamp for your embroidery, I find. Just because I need, I need to have different angles of the embroidery so that my wrist isn't all wonky trying to get under and over without <clears throat> without stabbing like my embroidery itself so we're not making any holes we're just weaving and it's like every other stitch it's about the tension um and you gotta just i don't know i find that the more floss i use the better it looks so don't be stingy with the floss um and I guess that depends on how you like your flowers to look. So I like the nice puffy three-dimensional ones. Um, and there's some other people out there that they do really, really nice ones. And sometimes mine turn out okay. Sometimes they look great. Sometimes I don't know what I do wrong. <laughs> it's just practice, you know. <clears throat> and then if you don't have enough floss, you can always add. And I always get stuck on my... I screw there when I do these. Um, you can always add more floss. You can change your color of floss in the middle to have your rose have a like a darker center or lighter center or just a different color. Um, these are fun to do with variegated floss so that the color changes throughout the rows. Um, there's a lot of different things you can do here. So I'm going to have to just finish this up. Bear with me. Um, for the daisy here, I'm just gonna do like satin stitch, so I won't, I won't show you guys that. Um, and then I'm gonna add some leaves on all sides, and then fill in any gaps with some French knots. Um, for the leaves, you can do a fishbone stitch. I'm probably just gonna do. Um, well, I might do fishbone. It's my favorite for leaves. Sometimes it's too, when the leaves are too small, I don't bother. I just do satin stitch because you're not really going to be able to see that detail anyways. But we'll see. We'll see how I feel. <laughs> Hopefully this light is working. I, we have afternoon light now. And 
Mornings is when the light's the best, but hopefully this will look okay. Maybe I can do a little editing and add some lightness. Ah, so I try to, oops, you don't want to do that. So I just like went through, Ugh, there we go. I can hide that. Um, I pierced through my thread on a previous loop there and kind of ended up changing the tension of my flower and I got this little hanger going on here now so I'm going to try to like tuck it back in sort of. <laughs> we can work with it. I don't like having to undo my roses. So much floss and time. Just, if there's a way to kind of fake it, I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> Okay. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention is I did do the little, um, let's see if it focused here. There we go. I did the little stitches on the toes. You can barely see them though. So I may go back and use this darker brown for that. So if you see a discrepancy in this video versus your directions, that's why. Because I may change my mind. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, we're going to say that's nice and plump enough. Um, so what I try to do, because whatever I don't fill in here with flowers and leaves is going to be have to fill the, be filled in with fur, um, which I'm going to do with either one or two strands of floss. So it's going to be more time consuming for me to fill in with fur than it is with flowers, is what I'm trying to say. So... I try to fill it in as much as possible with flowers to save me time with that fur. Um, so I'll have like some green coming out here maybe and down down here and out there. I mean nothing too crazy but enough so that when I come in it'll be a little easier when I fill this in. So actually let me show you what that's going to look like when I fill it in. Um, this will be my next step after I finish the... Uh, the flowers there so I'm going to use two strands of the white and this is gonna be to let me refocus here guys sorry my camera isn't auto focusing there we go okay this is gonna be the base layer <clears throat> for the, the main fur we're gonna come back in and do blending and add some shadows but um, this is just how I like to work it if you want to skip this and just go straight into shadows and like go into the other colors, like that's cool too. I I don't know, this way it just works better for my brain, if that makes sense. So they're going to be pretty long stitches here. So we're going to go all the way to the brown. Um, and when, when we come back with the single thread, we're going to uh, blend it. Okay, so... But for now, I just want to get this layer down. So this is going to take a while, right? We have a lot of empty space here to fill. We're going to go all the way around the face from the spines to the brown. And it's going to take some time. Um, yeah, I don't think you want to watch me do that. So, uh, and then continue here. Uh, and if you want, you can go look at one of those pictures again. You know, the fur is kind of angled out from the body. So that's just what I'm going to do. I'll have guidelines on the on the diagram so you guys can see that. But uh, So I have quite a bit of work to do before you see this again. So here we go. Here's a little close-up shot just so you can see the situation. Uh, so next time we meet up, we'll be doing some blending and some shadows and add some final details and... Shoot, after this, I mean, we're almost done. How cool is that? Hooray! Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> okay, we're back. Um, so I went a little further than I said, just so um, I could tell you what to do next. <laughs> so what I did is I, I actually finished the shading and whatnot on the right side. On the left side is what I said I would do. So let me do a close up here so you can see the difference. So I went in and I filled in with a two strands of white on the face here. 
and the body and I also did the flowers um, and that's all on the right I went ahead and did the thread painting and the shading and the details so it's actually kind of cool to see it like this you can really see how much more dimension you get when you add more colors to your work um, okay so we're gonna make the sides look equal um, and I made a little I changed what I was gonna do originally I actually added in an extra color for us um, let me focus there so the deal is is when I've made these in the past I haven't been using DMC thread that's my secret um, so this is actually the first one I've used, I've, I've stitched using these colors. Um, so you guys kind of got to see me figure it out for the first time. Um, but I think it looks good. I like it. So, um, yeah, I, I've been using the, uh, the Lisi and Cosmo thread and, um, it's just, it's super hard to find. So I didn't want to give you guys those numbers figured. DMC would be easier for everyone to get their hands on. Okay, so let's let's get going on here. So what I ended up doing, um, we'll start with the ears. So I, I added this extra color here, this 3772. Um, actually, let me focus back on my colors here for a second. So here you can kind of see the rainbow of what we're working with. Here's our pink. It's kind of outside the rainbow a bit, but we have from our lightest light to the darkest dark here. Um, so we go through the ECRU 842, 3773, 3772, 632. And then here's our spines and our eyes and nose. Um, so when you're blending these guys, this is kind of the order in which you will blend, if that makes sense. So if you have something that's this color and this color, you're going to blend it with what's in between, right? This color. Um, so for this ear, we have this lighter color in the middle, which is the 3773, and the darker color, 632. So we're going to blend it with this one in the middle here. So I believe I have some of that hanging out right here. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm just using a single strand for every time I blend. Oops. There we go. And if you look at the right ear, you can see that no one's really going to see this blending, but that's okay. Like, I felt like it needed to be done. You can kind of see it. So here I'm just going to be stitching over a little bit of both sides to make that line not so uh, dramatic, to kind of soften it, to blend it. <laughs> That's exactly what we're doing. But as you can see on the right, a lot of it's going to get covered with the, the fur from the face. Um, so it doesn't need to be perfect. And remember I said before, like when you do like long and short stitch, you should come up but not go down. And here obviously I'm doing a bit of both. Um, so this is where I kind of do some, let's see, this isn't like long and short stitch anymore because I'm going over two different colors. So I'm not really sure what it's called besides just blending, thread painting. Um... This is how I currently like to do it. <laughs> Could change. Okay. And I don't necessarily start at one side and work to the other. I just kind of fill in the space. Okay. I'll do a little over here too because there's this bright little one I'll kind of partially cover. Okay. So there we go. There's your ear. Done. Ta -da. Okay, so let's move to the paws. I decided to change that up a little bit as well. Let's see, for the lines, we're going to use the 3772, which I already have on here. 
because I thought that this other color was too light. So I'm just going to come in here and do these lines so they're a little bit more dramatic. Okay, three, and we're going to run out before I actually finish this. get one of these. I think you guys probably get the point so I don't need to switch threads and finish it. Actually, we got enough. We can make this happen. Oh, we got plenty. Okay. Actually, I don't think I want it to go that high. Oops. Sorry guys, I'm going to leave it right there for now. So on this side you can see I didn't go all the way to the top. I kind of left a little space. That's what I want to do with this one too. I'm going to go right there. Let me, let me do that so this isn't in the way. Ugh, working with a tiny thread and having an audience. Oh, I'm like shaking. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay, here we go. So I'm just going to go in here. I like how that looks a little bit better. Here's the back, by the way. Like I said, it's going to get messy. Okay. So... I also added some shading here with the lighter. So that's the 3773, which I have some here from before. Grab, oh, that's a different color. Okay, let me just thread this real quick. Sorry guys, it's a little easier for me to do it off camera. And I know what it, I know you guys know what it looks like to put a thread on a needle. Okay. So I'm going to do a little shading on this foot. So I'm basically doing the exact same thing I just did with the ear, except I'm just just making a shadow from where the foot or the toes would be over the bottom of the foot. So I don't want it to be distinct lines like it looks like right now because then it kind of looks like more toes. <laughs> so I want to have more of a, a blended look. So some of them are a little longer, some are a little shorter. So this is this would be called long and short stitch, but I'm doing it over satin stitch to create a shadow. Okay. So, like with my other videos, if you guys have questions, please, um, if it's related to this pattern, it'd be cool if you could put it, uh, put your questions, like, in a YouTube comment. That way other people can see the question and my response, because there's a good chance that if you have a question, someone else has a question, too. And I can always, um, if it makes sense, I can address the answer in a video or just in a comment. Um, so there we go, there's our foot. Foot one and foot two. Okay, um, so let's go ahead, we'll do the body. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, so let's see. Let's start with some of this color. This is the 842. So we're going to use this as like a shadow. You can see like it looks, oops, looks like a white hedgehog, right? But you know, and you can see here that there's a lot of other colors in there to help give it depth. So I try to write this in the instructions, so I think it'll just be easier for you to listen. Okay, so... 
basically the shadow on the body is going to be under the neck so here so we're going to put shadow here and then i put just some random pieces throughout here and shorter ones of the darker colors closer to where the flowers are and the the feet the paws so on this side you can see like the darker color i added a tiny bit of the 3773 in here just a few strands here and see these really short ones here okay don't want to add too much of those okay there's a cat hey get out of here get out of here you want to say hi oh i think she sees a bug hi kitty she's not into it okay you gotta go away bye bye okay she doesn't want to be a youtube star okay so let me do some of that. We'll start up here. So this is the in-between color. There's gonna be, there's three colors that you add to make the shadow. And this is the one in between. You can start with any of them, really. I'm not sure why I picked this one first. <laughs> I just, it's kind of like a back and forth process. So there's no wrong way. I'm just kind of filling in here. Now, you might think it's silly that we put down that base layer, and it might be silly. I'm not sure. That's just how I do it. It might not be necessary. It's kind of like so I don't have to fill in the whole body with a single strand of these colors. I don't know. It works for me. It's my current, my current uh, method. Like I said, I might change someday we'll see okay so I'm adding in these colors here come on camera you can do it there we go and you can see I'm kind of going I'm extending beyond in some of the cases and not everyone is perfectly parallel because this is fur right it doesn't all lay perfectly even some of it's gonna be a little crazier and fluffier and come on camera Okay, sorry guys. Okay, so I think that's enough over there. I'm going to start coming over a little lower and adding some more. Here. Some really crazy angles going on. Um, and then you definitely want to go over the spines. Okay. Um, let me get, I definitely need some darker in here. There we go. And then I'll do some, maybe some shorter ones. So, in this area where I'm not going to go all the way to the spines, I'll be doing it with the white. I'll be doing overlap. Okay, so this is just going to add some depth to this fur. Okay, um, oops. So let's use a little bit of ecru. I hope that's how you say that. I've got a cat over here just watching me. I'm afraid she's just going to jump on this table any second and knock all this stuff off. Okay, <clears throat> so the egg group basically works to blend that darker color we just used with the white. So I'm going to add some of it up here and just kind of work my way down. Let's see how that's looking. Okay, so, etc. I'm going to continue all the way down with this. Um, why I have the 
while I have the ecru, what I'm going to do is come up to the face. So right here, I use ecru to blend the really dark with the white. So I'm going to show you what that looks like here on this left side. Basically what we've already done. I'm just doing it on video in case my written directions are a little unclear. And then over here, we actually have a shadow. See here how it's a little bit darker? Basically, we're going to do what we just did down here on these two sides. So I'm going to add a little ecru here. Um, and we also need to go back with that other color that we just finished up with. Okay, so... I just keep working that here so it's it's blending and then it's also going to be up and over these spines okay like this and you you know I think before I use that the slightly darker color first you can see it doesn't it's not really going to make much of a difference um, I'm at this point, I'm just using the ecru because it's it's already on my needle. <laughs> okay, so just keep doing that. I'm going to come all the way down here. So you don't want to get too dark where I'm at now because you want to have that contrast here. You want the neck to be slightly darker. And the side of the face. Oops, I just lost this. Okay. So, what else do I need to tell you here? <clears throat> um... So for the face... Well, let me finish talking about the body. I'm sorry, guys. So, after you've done those colors, I added a tiny bit, like I mentioned, of the slightly darker, the 3773. So, we're going to add a couple strands here, maybe some shorter versions, okay? And then come back with your white and see what I did here is I added some more white and I changed, added some weird directional, directional <laughs> strands here. Um, because of the way the hedgehogs look when they're on their back, some of the, the fur gets kind of distorted from where the, the animal is kind of bending. Over. It's, anyways, look at a picture and you'll see. Um, and this helps them look fluffier, you know. So I definitely added more, more white there. You know, I didn't want to cover up this shading, but I did use the white to kind of help blend. Okay, hopefully you can see that okay. Um, so back up to the face, so in between the pink here, come on camera, between the pink and this dark brown, you can use the 3773 to blend those two with a single strand, okay? Um, and then you can add 3773 and then the other two lighter browns in here. You can see I used all of those colors to kind of blend in this tiny section and around the eyes, okay? Um, and then come back with the white and do the same thing on the outsides here. You need some white here and then at the very top, of course, white. And even a couple, I threw a couple back in here even though that's the shadow to give it more dimensionality, okay? Um, I did not end up doing a highlight on the nose. You are welcome to. Uh, any of the colors will work, really. Um, the eye has the white highlight, and those are just, I think it's just one or two 
stitches in here I did with the white. Um, noses are not as shiny as eyes, so you might not want to do white. You might want to do one of the darker colors. And then I added some cute little whiskers. And I went over, you can see, <laughs> I went over the flowers when I did the whiskers um, to add even more dimensionality. So, I don't know. I think that's all I want to say right now. I was going to try to stitch this whole thing on camera, but um, I'm finding it challenging. Maybe I can set up the, I'll do that. I'm going to set up the, the clamp and sit down and do it. I'm standing up to do this. And it's a, it's a work in progress, guys. So I thank you for your patience with me, and um, that's it. Okay, thanks.